So if you could think in your head of some famous logos from famous companies, what are some that come to mind when I say a famous logo? Nike, good. What's it look like? A swoosh, a big like rounded check mark. Good. What else? Apple. Apple. It's a apple. Very good. It's an apple. What else? How about a store? Big box store. Red. What comes to mind? Target. Target. Very good. What's their logo? A Target. Sam's Club. Also, I think it's a box too, though. Walgreens. You got a big W on it. What was McDonald's? What do we have? Yeah, the M with the arches. Okay. So those are some really good ones. So here are just a handful because there's a kajillion out there. I just wanted to focus in on a few because otherwise the brain's going to hurt. Um, so let's think like if you had to come up with a recipe for what makes a good logo, there's a few things. Now think about it. You told me the Target logo was a legit Target. So what would be a good rule to describe making a good logo? What do you need to have? You want it to like, you want it to match its name. So I have a little list because I've gathered this from a few different places. So we want it to be something that is appropriate to the product or the company. So a Target, pretty appropriate to the company Target. An Apple, pretty appropriate to the company Apple. Okay. Um, also, I told you like the color was associated with it. You know, you said McDonald's red, Target red, certain things like that. So that also falls under um, easy to identify. We want it to be something that it's very recognizable. Pretty much everyone in here is familiar with McDonald's, even if you don't eat there every day. I don't eat there very often, but it sticks out in my mind. It's iconic, okay? Um, how would you describe the level of complexity for someone who's like a graphic designer making this? Even just what you know from in Adobe Illustrator. Do you think any of these are really difficult to illustrate? No. no, why not? They're just words with like different colors. They're just words with different colors. They're pretty straightforward. The symbols really aren't too crazy. I think everyone here could make a target sign on their own pretty well. Um, these are mostly just text. Even the apple, the little shading, isn't too crazy. I think everyone here could definitely make a Toyota sign too. Um, so they're also not overly complex. So think, it, think about it this way. Let's say, um, guys, Let's say you're an employee for Mercedes Benz and maybe you're like a salesperson, okay? So you have a business card. You have to be able to shrink that Mercedes Benz logo really tiny. I used to have some samples here, but um, really tiny to fit on a business card. But on the other hand, you need that big logo to be blown up so it could go on the front of the dealership. So we want it to be simple so we could blow it up and shrink it down really easily as well, okay? Um, any questions about that stuff so far? Super. Um, so these are some things we're going to keep in mind because we are going to do a logo for the upcoming design because let's open this up so we can see. We are designing band-aid boxes. So I know your traditional band-aid is very, very lame looking. They're not exciting. I think we can all agree with that. I was actually going to bring in my own box of band-aids. Forgot. But we are going to come up with our own design. It's hard to believe that this box actually fits on this little piece of paper here. This is like your standard printer paper. And what I did is I took a real Band-Aid box. Um, I unassembled it, traced it, and I drew over it in Illustrator to make this pattern for us. So we're all going to work really flat um, on this pattern. When you think about it, probably smaller than most of our other projects. Um, and we'll be able to sketch it out on here scan it into Illustrator, and we'll be able to create the design in Illustrator. We're also going to sketch out our logos on the back here. So we'll have like three possibilities for logos. I don't care if they're the same idea or three different. Totally doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the package because that's more on the fun side. So I have some samples here. There's also a bunch of samples when you're exiting the room on um, the bulletin boards on the right-hand side. You can take a look at those. So this one's cute. We've got um, bunny aids, bunny band-aids. We've got strawberry milk band-aids. We've got sweet aids, so like sweet lollipops, cupcakes, stuff like that. 
emoji aids, and ice cream. So that was fun. Okay, so we want to keep a few things in mind when we're designing a whole package. I know band-aids aren't like the most exciting topic, and that's why you're going to pick a theme, even if it's a little far-fetched, if one will. Um, I had someone do like kitchen items a few years ago, so like one of her bandages like was a whisk. Um, and the other one was like one of those big stand mixers. So it's okay to have like some creative freedom with that. I think a frying pan was one of the bandages as well. So that was pretty funny. Um, I know the box for a mandate is probably very uninteresting. So we need to jazz that up a little bit. What do you think is some important information to put on a package of a band -aid, uh, for a bandage box? We already, we'll start with one. I give you the logo on there. We want to have that logo, which is telling me like what the theme is. Okay. What else are you learning from the front cover of this box? What's going to be in there? So it's telling me 25 different ice cream shaped bandages. So this is telling me number one, quantity is really important. If you're at like the store and you see a bunch of boxes in a row, you don't know if one Band-Aid box is going to have 100 Band-Aids in it or like 10. So quantity is really important. Um, you're going to put your name on the bottom with the period. So that stays pretty plain. Some people went in and what else is on this side that you could add? What could you add on here? A barcode, really good idea. There's a kajillion of them on the internet. You don't have to make one. You can just use one. Okay. Um, so it looks like they reiterated what's on this box again, because I know that's a tiny little spot there. Okay. And the other side, what are they giving us as far as information goes here? I'll zoom in a little bit. The directions, how to apply a Band-Aid, just in case you don't know how. Okay. What other information is at the second half of the box? Yeah, contact information, website, 1-800 number. Some people do social media on theirs. Like if you want to use, this one I think has it. Mm, one of them does here. No, you can't plug your own Insta. Um, oh, it was this one. So if you want to put social media icons on there and you want to take those from the internet without making them yourselves, that I'm okay with. So you're welcome to do something along those lines as well. The one requirement I'm having you have on your Band-Aid box is you're going to have some kind of three-sentence three description. So like a paragraph or some kind of information on the back. So in this case, this girl broke it down into like a few different parts. She talked about like all the pieces of the Band-Aid, like the hurt-free padding. It smells nice. Uh, it protects you from germs. This student, this one is cute. He did grade aids. They were supposed to be bandages to like improve your grades. And he just did his as like a paragraph here. Heal your bad grades through this magical product from teenagers up to college students. It will heal your grades instantly and efficiently. Remove adhesive tape and attach to your grade. It will give you an A plus. So something short that goes on the back. I'm open to it being like a paragraph or you're breaking it down into like a chart type of thing. It's up to you. Um, what does it look like goes on the top flap here? The logo gets repeated again. Um, and you'll notice like inside, I'll open both of them here. We actually will print it and we glue it to oak tag, which is like a little thinner than poster board. That way the box has like some strength that doesn't accidentally get crushed. Um, and then I'll show you how we glue it together. And they're actually pretty strong. Um, the next step, what I generally do for our final exam, which we haven't had a final exam in a really long time. Um, for those of us who aren't exempt, we'll make three band-aids that match it. The nice part is most people can use some of their like drawings from the actual project to make the band-aids, so it is pretty fast. I'll just show you these real fast so you have an idea of what's happening. So she had three bandages, the little gauze thing on it, and then the other side is, is just the oak tag. So that's the part that comes up, but we don't have to worry about that yet. You'll always have the file to refer back to, which is good. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what helps these, like, each side of this box, like, match together? How do I make this box feel really cohesive and that it's not disjointed? 
I think we can agree that when I flip through this box, everything looks similar on all sides of it. What helps it feel really similar throughout the whole box? Good. You kind of have that same style. Like we have a similar background throughout all of it, or perhaps there's even a border or a band that goes through it. You have similarity. You're pretty much using the same font throughout most of the piece. You pretty much have the same colors throughout the piece. And that's going to help create that uniformity. We want the whole thing to match and feel cohesive. What's up? So the whole thing is going to be like almost like it looks like it's going to be drawn. There's not going to be like anything. You have a few options. I don't know if it's on here. One sec. Uh, I want to show you the ones on here. If you want to use photos, you can. And that's why I want to show you the ones up here. Okay. So, for example, this student here with the bone ones, um, with the doggies, they uh, they went in and they used photos. I'm totally fine if you want to use photos and you want to cut them out. For the logo itself, you really need to make that more an illustrator with your text and your fonts. Um, but I'm okay with you using photos. My only thing I don't want you to use, I don't want you to take someone else's drawing from the internet. Like, the box and the package is so small that you don't really need the deep, like, you need to just make simple shapes. You can't even get that detail. Um, so I don't want you to take other people's drawings. I want you to like make that stuff simply out of different shapes. But if you want to use a combination of images with some drawn elements, I am totally fine with that. Yeah. And yeah, if you want that, it's the Game Boy one cool. If you want to take like an object and transform that into your box, I'm open to that too. That's someone else's idea, but like you can incorporate that into your whole box. So, are there any other questions coming to mind? Okay, let's, um, here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to hand out the sheet, and you have all of today, and you have all of Friday to work on the sheet. It's going to be due Friday at the end of the period. I want you to design your three logos first. I wouldn't make your logo crazy wide because we need it to fit on the box. You don't have to color it, just use a pencil, and you're going to start designing your logos here. Hold on, guys, one more second. Then you're going to go in on the front here, and you're going to look at the worksheet. When you're working on the worksheet, you're going to draw your logo in here. And I made a little note. You don't have to, like, write your literal paragraph here. You could just make a box and write paragraph in it. Any place that says tab doesn't need to be filled in because that's going to be glued over later. Um, and you'll fill it in as best you can. Any questions so far? All right, cool. Let's get rolling.